Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 530. Developing this evening, a man is behind bars after court documents say he choked and held a gun to a woman's head. Officials say it happened Saturday morning around 2 when 46-year-old Ryan Hegel got into an argument with a woman. Court documents state Hegel choked and held a gun to the back of that woman's head during the dispute. He has been charged with felony terrorizing with a dangerous weapon and two felony counts of domestic violence. Three people are in jail after a traffic stop led to a meth lab bust in Polk County. Officials say it happened last Wednesday evening around 4. That's when Polk County officials initiated a traffic stop, eventually arresting Cohen Kerfman, Alicia Muth, and Jordan Shea for possession of meth. When authorities checked Kerfman's home, they say they found all the ingredients for a meth lab. All three are facing several felony charges. And it's nice to have a break from the rain, but this is a short break because it's coming back. Let's find out when from Nathan in your no wait weather. Nathan? Yeah, the good news is we do have a couple more hours of some quiet and dry weather ahead of us, but that's much different than what we saw this morning. Take a look at this time lapse from 4 a.m. this morning. Those low clouds and uh, the fog and mist that we had starting off our uh, Tuesday morning temperatures only dropped into the upper 50s there, so very humid air mass we had. But now we do have some sun peeking through, so some of those westbound travelers may need to have those sunglasses on for the night as the sun looks to peek through some of those broken clouds as we head through the rest of this evening up toward sunset. The satellite does show again some thinning of the clouds, but then also it shows some thickening of the clouds in our southern and western neighborhoods. We do have some moisture pushing in through the central Dakotas as we speak, and that could shake things up, especially overnight into tomorrow. But uh, you see temperatures drop to the middle 50s there by midnight. But of course, I will talk about the rain and even a better chance of rain coming up on Thursday here, Melanie. And I'll uh, have that full forecast coming up in a couple minutes. Okay, thank you, Nathan. A 21-year-old man is recovering from his injuries after crashing his vehicle on County Road 23, just north of Verndale, Minnesota. Officials say it happened this morning around 5. Deputies say 21-year-old Jared Sunram was heading southbound on County Road 23 when he crossed into the other lane, entered the ditch, hit an approach, and landed in a small grove of trees. Sunram was taken by ambulance to Tri-County Health Care in Wadena with injuries. A warning from a Minnesota family to take lung injuries from vaping seriously as her son fights for his life. We've talked a lot about the now 32 cases of this illness being investigated in Minnesota as professionals struggle to understand how vaping products might trigger severe lung injuries. And for the first time, Kent Erndahl introduces us to people being impacted by it. Yeah, With medical professionals struggling to understand how vaping products might trigger severe lung injuries. This is what I found. Cedric McClure struggles to understand how his son Elijah's life changed so suddenly. You go to text something and you just lose it. Because you're typing and you're saying that he's on a respirator. Elijah has been dependent on that respirator and a feeding tube for 10 days now. To see him all hooked up on those tubes and... Um, and not being able to respond, I wouldn't want anybody having to go through that. So the McClures are speaking out. It's absolutely devastating. I haven't heard my son's voice in well over a week. Cedric says 21-year-old Elijah was an otherwise healthy former high school athlete. But during a trip to the state fair a couple of weeks ago, he felt sick. And in the days to come, he was in and out of the ER in Maple Grove. The violent retching with the dry heaping and vomiting the pain that he was going through really shook me to my core. It wasn't until his nurses asked about vaping that Elijah acknowledged a habit he'd largely hidden from his parents for years. He started vaping at 15. It was a point of contention with him and myself. We took a hard stance, if you will, on it. When he went into the emergency room, he knew he had to be honest because um, at that point, you know, he's sick. Elijah is now one of 32 potential cases in Minnesota and 450 nationwide. And though many are now being linked to illegal products that contain THC and additives like vitamin E, for now, Cedric only has these clues about what Elijah used. And he simply prays he'll soon be able to ask his son about the rest. 
Elijah's parents say all they can hope for is that their child will survive his mistakes. Elijah's dad says we're all going to make mistakes, but the point is can you survive them, can you learn from them, and what you can take away from them. Meanwhile, U.S. Senators learned of John Bolton's sudden exit as National Security Advisor, along with other followers of President Trump's Twitter feed. Republican Senator Mitt Romney called it a big loss for America's foreign policy. But Democrat Chris Coons, as he was told of the firing, expressed concerns about the stability of President Trump's team and the image that projects. Um, I think there's a lot that we need to know about what caused this abrupt firing by tweet of the president's national security advisor, what the policy differences were, um, and what this means about stability, um, America's place in the world, and the decision-making team that surrounds our president. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi tweeted, Bolton's sudden departure is a symbol of disarray that is unnerving America's allies. The disagreement between the Fargo Education Association, or FEA, and the Fargo School Board's negotiations team is now heading to court. The Education Association says the school board violated North Dakota Century Code when it declared an impasse without the union's agreement. Now, the Education Association says it has filed paperwork with the Gas County District Court to compel the school board to come back to the negotiating table. The two organizations were attempting to create new teacher contracts but had several sticking points such as teacher salaries and safety concerns leading the school board to walk away from negotiations and declare an impasse. For more information on this story you can go to our website valleynewslive.com and click on this story. New research has uncovered that one social media app may know more about your personal life than your friends do. Privacy International found that some period tracking apps were taking some of your most sensitive data, including when you logged contraception use, monthly periods and menstruation symptoms, and shared it with Facebook. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley explains what this means if you use one of these apps and which apps to use instead. Phones are a woman's best friend when it comes to keeping track of Mother Nature's monthly visits. Heading to the app store, you'll find several period tracking apps women use to either maximize their chances at conception or just the opposite. Most of the apps have users fill out your use of birth control the last time you had sex, your mood, and usually has a diary-like section for you to write down your symptoms or any other notes. And most of that is information not even your closest friends know. But as one research group found, all of that data may have been shared with Facebook. The two largest offenders are the companies behind these apps, meaning it's best to stop using them and delete them from your phone. Experts adding they're not sure if there's anything you can really do to get that information back. But it's not all bad news. Researchers say not every cycle tracking app they looked into shared users info with Facebook. So if you're still in the market, experts say these are the apps to look out for, saying Flow Period Tracker, Clue Period Tracker, and Period Tracker by GP are your safest options when it comes to protecting your very personal information. In Fargo, Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. Experts say the reason advertisers are interested in information like this is because women who are pregnant or looking to become pregnant are likely to change their shopping habits, making it easy to create new personal ads. Hornbacher's customers have come through in a big way with another substantial donation in the fight to end hunger with a gift of over $76,000 to the Great Plains Food Bank. The gift is part of Hornbacher's annual Check Out Hunger month-long campaign where customers made donations at the checkout lines at all nine Hornbacher's locations throughout Fargo, West Fargo, and Moorhead. Not only we raised uh, over $76,000 this year, which is the number one uh, year we've had in the 25 years, so we're really proud of that. But uh, in the 25th year, we just crossed over the half million dollar mark uh, just for this program. Officials say the donation is the highest amount ever raised by Hornbacher's customers for the Great Plains Food Bank in the history of the Checkout Hunger Campaign, adding it's enough to supply more than 229,000 meals for children, seniors, and families in need.
Don't forget to tune into the Farmers Union Insurance Bison Football pregame show that will begin at 11 Saturday morning. The pregame show will be followed by North Dakota State University taking on the Delaware Fighting Blue Hens at Delaware Stadium at noon. You will be able to watch the game on KVLY, GoBison.com, Hulu Live, YouTube Live, Fubo, and Sony OTT. Just